Loki season two. Will it save the MCU? Alan, what say you? I uh, it won't save the MCU, but it's uh, I'll, I'll I'll be positive here. Uh, it is the best. I, in my opinion, best Marvel DC, uh, Marvel Disney that's been put out there. Will it save it? No, because the the audience for this is very limited. Uh, I don't think it's going to reach a broad audience that it needs to. And unfortunately, everything else has been crap. And um, and if you're right that it's going to lead to something big for Captain Marvel, uh, no one's going to care. Well, here's the problem: is here's what I'm told from a source. The last two episodes of Loki season two, which you and I have not seen yet, right. and we're not going to see for a couple of weeks. Right. Only and I'm on pretty sure this is, this is the reason why uh, we haven't seen it. Right. So uh, episode five and six of Loki, because it's a short season, six episodes, there will be a cataclysmic event that is going to affect everything in the Marvel universe. Every character will be touched by this event. So I am told. Now, the end of Loki season two also coincides with the Marvels that's coming out on uh, November 9th, 10th. I like to see movies on the Thursday that they open. So is this going to like, here's the problem with it then. Do you need to have seen those last few episodes of Loki season two to understand what's going on in the Marvels? Because if they start doing stuff like that, obviously these Marvel series have not been, have, have not been the huge hit that they thought they were they were you daredevil um the new daredevil which is like daredevil born again it's going to be on disney plus they stopped shooting because it wasn't working they're looking to find different writers this is this is the point that we're at i i believe based on everything that i've heard and i've heard things for a while but i think now we're at the point where this is the hard, this is the hard pivot that Marvel's been talking about doing. This is hard the real pivot. snap you're saying. This is the real snap. Um, couple couple of other things. Ironheart, the TV series, has been delayed until 2025 with no premiere date on the calendar. Mm -hmm. The TV show Echo, they basically are going to drop all episodes on one day. I think what they're trying to do is make it so that YouTubers can't like. YouTubers like, you know, like Alan Ng are not going to be talking about it for weeks, right? Yeah. So, so you've got, you've got, you've got that happening with Echo. Um, Loki, I think Loki, the thing that sa has saved it for me is just the cast. Mm -hmm. Even though it's like confusing and they're like, there are a ton of MacGuffins where it's like, this is really important. Oh, don't worry. It's not that important. This is so important. It's the end of the universe. Oh, don't worry. That's not a big deal. I'm tired of being jerked around where the, the level of stakes seems to change based on, you know, uh, an offhand line that we hear. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. Again, I'm, I'm a little more positive toward Loki season two. I, I think to me, uh, I was kind of not sure where this was going in the first two episodes. But when it hit episode three, that's when the action and the narrative picks up. And, and I describe it this way. Episodes one and two of Loki are the rules of the show. Uh, they play with time and they and they experiment with time in the first two episodes. In episodes three and four, now that you've established the rules, now you have your main story with Kang or the one who was killed before, whatever his name is. Um, you know, now you now now there's this battle that goes on and um I'll spoil the themes of it, but it, it kind of goes to the idea of if you could go back in time and kill Hitler, would you do it? Or would you get Hitler on your side? You know, that's kind of the impression you get uh, in, in season three and four. And I think that's where they're kind of headed with the idea behind it. It's, it's better written than most things. I would say, again, it's mid science fiction. Um, you know, I, I, I would be hard pressed to convince you that you need to see the show. But if you give it a chance and you have an open mind, I think you'll get through it and, and you might find some enjoyment out of it. Uh, I, I know you don't feel the same way. No, I don't. I don't feel the same way. <laughs> I, I just, I mean, you, you had to forgive a lot of things. That's, I mean, this is the thing is I'm making excuses for it to get you to say, Hey, it's not as bad as you think, 
But the fact that I have to make excuses for it means, you know, this is this is the state of Marvel at the time. This is this is Marvel's fault. Absolutely. Well, to me, I think that the biggest mistake ties in with a tweet that you put out, which I'm going to mm -hmm. put up in a second, because um, I think it might be Alan's biggest tweet. It's got to be Alan's biggest tweet. Yeah, that's what she said. Because because all these people, are, because that's what, well, I mean, you got invited on um, WDW Pro show just to talk about your tweets. Yeah, unfortunately, so, I can't make it. I can't make it. But uh, well, but, but but here's 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 my point. What I don't like about the Loki show is it's not Loki is not in the show. Mm -hmm. This is a version of Loki, but this is the version of Loki that we knew from the first Avengers movie mm -hmm. who was a trickster who could not be trusted, who was uh, lethal in a fight, who, who, you know, was conniving and had plans. And that is not who is yep. the, the, the character that's in the show, even though it's played by Tom Hiddleston and the character's called Loki. It's not Loki. It, this isn't Loki and even Loki. So, so that variant, the one that, that is in the Loki show came on the heels of the end of the first Thank Avengers you. movie. And, and we're supposed to believe that after seeing his life, that may have been that he's a completely changed person that he still doesn't have. Um, and I'm not even talking about superpowers. He doesn't have like the faculties within him character wise, character wise to be conniving and the trickster that doesn't go away. That's not a superpower. That's a personality attribute. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to throw up on screen um, the tweet that you put out that yeah. I think. I'll, I'll, just, not... yeah, no, let me just, I'll just say that um, it's literally, they should just, the, the show would be good if they just removed everything Marvel about it. And just had a, a science fiction adventure in in a in the time variant uh, TVA, and uh, starring Tom Hiddleston and Owen Wilson. You know, because uh, I agree, uh, you you're not going to see Loki use his powers until uh, episode, till episode three or four, and he doesn't use it that much. You know, and yes, he is fundamentally different than than the Loki uh, of of the first Thor, and barely the Loki that died in in Infinity War. Um, and so, yeah, they, it, it, the, the, the problem is, is that this is associated with Marvel and, um, uh, and I think it could be a better show if it wasn't. Well, low key is literally L O W K E Y. He's low key. Yeah. Glenn. He's a good guy. There's, Glenn, there's, good your, Glenn, there's your header for this video about yeah. this, this, the clip. All right. Here's, I've got to read this tweet from Alan Ng on Twitter or X at my pal Al. The Ahsoka and Disney Plus problem is this generation thinks bland storytelling is great. All about narratives. We chase outcomes instead of character. The journey with its trials is as significant as the destination. Character is the foundation on which real success is built. I, you've got a lot of comments in there, but you, you, you should be an executive at Disney Plus. <laughs> Because you've identified this isn't just the problem with the MCU, uh, with 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 Ahsoka. You use Ahsoka as an example. This is a problem also with the MCU shows. Yep. It's not about character. It's about, well, this happens, and then this happens, and then this happens, and then this happens, and then this happens. And the problem is with enough things happening that don't matter, nothing matters. But these characters matter quite a bit. And this well, is where it's, it's a show about getting the thing, you know, right. Uh, you know, it, someone, someone, if you read the comments uh, of this tweet, one person, I, I don't know who it is basically said, yeah, if you boil down Lord of the Rings, it was to throw a ring into a sea of lava. Uh, I mean, you these know, comments and, and, and you realize, and you realize, no, Lord of the Rings is much deeper than that. It was the journey to get to ultimately get to that ring to get to that sea of lava and then the battle to throw it into the law into the lava and uh and they had just built these characters every single character was built uh brilliantly every character has an arc that they had to struggle through to get to that final ending and when they finally got to the thing they everyone was a fundamentally different person and left the world in a better place uh at the end of the of the trilogy uh, you can't say that definitely definitely about ahsoka which 
you know, the end game was, hey, we're going to switch places with with all our characters. Well, here, here I, I want to read just a few of these comments, Ooh. some of the highlights here. But uh, Valiant Renegade gave you a this. Yeah. If you, get a, if you get a this, you know it's a good <laughs> comment. Um, Eric, master of 108 Secret Skills, says a lot of writers and younger people who consume the content that they write don't really uh, don't really seem to understand the concept of a story being more than just a collection of things that happen. Uh, so there you go. Uh, Conjugunus, I'm saying that incorrectly. I don't get this point at all. Disney Plus shows have declining viewership because lots of people don't like the storytelling. And you really think these shows are more bland than similar fair 15 years ago? No, I mean, that's a fair point. There are, look, there are other dumb shows. I just think we expect more eric o sullivan aka reverend sully says it's like video game plot points with soap opera story beats with action scenes to justify brand and title mm -hmm. and then of course the one of my favorite memes from red letter media just consume product then then get excited for next product don't ask questions so there you go uh i just think i i don't think that one show can save the mcu i think that the marvels I'm not going to predict how the Marvels is going to do. Look, I bought tickets. I'm going to be there day one. All right. Alan and I, hopefully we'll see it early. We'll do a non-spoiler, you know, night of that. We see it. We'll do a review. Mm -hmm. Then we'll do a spoiler review on that Friday on, on uh, November 10th. We're going to do, we'll do that with all of you. But um, I think the fact that you may have to, you may actually have to, in order to understand the events of the Marvel cinematic universe going forward, if you're going to have to be able to, you're going to have to watch the last two episodes of Loki season two to know what's going on. You have failed as storytellers. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that's really disheartening it, it to me, these events. And if you look at, look at the box office for all the Marvel movies, the biggest box office has always been consistently not individual character movies like Captain America and Iron Man, which are among the top grossing uh, at the box office, all the Avengers movies, the top movies, all the Avengers films because they were, you know, team up movies, you know, with, with lots of characters that are beloved. They're all, all the top grossing Marvel movies are Avengers movies. So leading into that, they're going to have to sum up the events. They can't pull in Ahsoka and assume that the audience has watched all of rebels, six seasons of rebels and all of clone wars, because I didn't do that. Well, final thoughts on Loki season two will it save the mcu uh no no uh, it's it, it's a testament to the fact that there are some good writers uh but I, I feel like they're not given good direction and they're given properties that have backed themselves into corners and uh i think you know i think a huge reset is, is gonna the only thing that will save marvel is a huge reset you think so yeah all right well fair point yeah and that might include leadership at Disney and Marvel. Well, there you go. 